Hi, youth beginner students. This is Master C. We've got some fun stuff going on today for sparring class. Uh, before we get into the class, and even before we do the cow joke, I want to tell you about something really cool that is happening on Tuesday, right? So at, uh, I think it's 5.30. Is that for the youth students, 5.30? Yes. Okay, yep. So 5.30 tomorrow, we have a Zoom meeting with you guys. We're going to do a little chat, and we're going to do a little bit of Tang Sudo trivia, right? So I know you guys have a million of these like online Zoom meetings for school and stuff, so we're not going to make it super long. It'll be 15 or 20 minutes, but Master Cosby's already sent an email to your people about it. So uh, if you can make it, man, I'd love to see you there. It'll be super fun. Again, it'll be 5.30, so about the time we would normally be having class. Uh, so I think that'll work out pretty nice. Now, uh, let's do our cow joke. This one was sent in by one of the students, which is really cool. So thank you, Ben Shiflett, for that. Um, it is, what do cows like to read in the morning? They like to read, well, you know, I'm gonna tell you at the end of class, okay? So for now, let's go ahead and bow it in. Face this way, check it out. Face the flags, cookie, all right? Baro. Face the picture of the grandmasters. Kwang Chan Im. Chariot. Kunye. Face this way again. Chariot. Kunye. All right. So it is a sparring week. Uh, I know obviously not everybody has uh, like sparring partners they can work with at home, but I do want to go over some cool things that will help you with your sparring. Um, when we finish this class, I'll encourage you again to review some of your other material if you have some stripes that you want to work on because. All right, so for our warm up, we're gonna do a little bit of sparring footwork. I'm gonna turn sideways here. For the first round, remember you're gonna have your lead hand low, your rear hand high. Now the way you know which one is lead and rear is based on the direction that I'm facing. So if I'm facing the cubbies over there, my hand that's closest to the cubbies is my lead hand. The hand that's farthest away is the rear hand. Boom, lead hand low, rear hand high. When I move forward, my front leg is gonna step, my back leg, like a pirate with a peg leg, is gonna drag, drag. Step, drag, step, drag. So in the space that you're in, I'm gonna give you 45 seconds in a second. I want you to step, drag, step, drag, step, drag, all the way through your space. When you get to the end of your line, I want you to do 10 awesome jumping jacks, then go back where you started and switch your feet. Again, make sure you have lead hand low, rear hand high, step, drag. Step, drag, step, drag, step, drag. This is not a race, so take your time. Great footwork, great clapping, slapping, jumping jacks, and I'll see you back here in 45 seconds. Great job with that forward moving step drag. This time, we're gonna step drag, but we're gonna move backwards, okay? Make sure that the dog isn't behind you or you're gonna trip over something and break your neck. So from here, my back leg is gonna step. My hand posture is the same. Step, then I'm going to drag that front leg. Step, drag, step, drag, step, drag. Notice how whatever direction I'm moving in, the foot that's in that direction moves first. So when I was moving forward, my front leg moved. Step, drag, step, drag. When I'm moving backwards, like we're doing for this round, my back leg moves. Step, drag, step, drag, step, drag. This time, when you get to the end of your space, instead of those 10 jumping jacks, I want to see six good squats. Right, nice and deep. Get those legs a little bit of a workout. I'll give you 45 seconds again, and I'll see you right back here.
awesome work again, guys. So we're holding our same position. Lead hand low, rear hand high. This time we're gonna work some lateral movement. So I'm not moving forward or backwards. I'm actually gonna be moving to the side. Now, in sparring, I like to think of the direction that my belly button is pointed as kind of being the open direction. The direction my back is pointed is kind of closed. So I'm gonna move in the open direction here, lateral movement, so my back leg is gonna step first. Step, almost like I stepped into like a front stance. Just drag, step, drag, step, drag. You could truly just work this sideways, or you can kind of work it in a bit of a circle. So I'm here, step, drag, step, drag, step, drag. Of course, in a sparring application, you would just move in relation to your partner, right? You would never just walk around the grocery store or the cereal aisle this way necessarily, right? So you can feel free to kind of move in your space with the lateral movement step drag, in which case when you get to the end of your area, instead of uh, jumping jacks or squats, this time you're gonna do four good push-ups. If you're circling, then when you complete a full circle, that's when you would do four push-ups. Again, each round, you would switch your feet. Step, drag, step, drag, and so on. 45 seconds again, I'll see you right back here. Good job with that sparring footwork. I know for newer students that can seem really complicated. It's important that you get those details just right though. If you've been doing this for a long time and it seems really easy for you, it's really important to get them just right still. So it's great to drill these in. Uh, I'm a master rank and I still spend a lot of time practicing this, these very basic footwork drills because it's so important to have good sparring habits, okay? Now, let's get a quick stretch in. So go ahead and put your hands on your hips and hip circles. Ah, feels pretty good. Other way. Some of you guys know the answer to my cow joke already. I can tell. Good, arm circles backwards. And forward. Back and forth across your chest. Feels good. Link your hands together, trunk twist.
Good, hands on your hips, head side to side. Looking left and right. Up and down. Spread your feet apart. Lean forward, one hand on each foot. And repeat after me. Hana! Hana! Two! Two! Set! Set! Net! Net! Tase! Tase! Yase! Yase! Ilga! Ilga! Yoro! Choro! Ahop! Aho! Kyo! Kyo! Good. Both hands over to your right foot. And il. Il. E. E. Sa. 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 O. O. Yu. Yu. Chu. Chu. Pa. Pa. Ku. Ku. Chip. Chip. Other side. Hana. Hana. Tu. Tu. Set. Set. Net. Net. Tase. Tase. Yase. Yase. Uga. Uga. Yuro. Yuro. Up. Up. Yu. Chu. Good, hands to the middle. Just breathe a little bit. Feels good. Sink into that stretch. Very nice. Good job. Grab a quick sip of water, guys. We'll see you back here. Got a really cool sparring concept that I wanna share with you today. All right, guys, so as it relates to sparring, today we're gonna to talk about how you can find and take advantage of openings on your partner. So you will need someone to work with you, so be really friendly with them, don't smack them around too hard, and it uh, should be really, really fun. So I fortunately have a great partner. We have Master Cosby. Now, when we are sparring in class, we typically ha have this sparring posture of the lead hand low, rear hand high, just like we practiced for part of our warm up. But not everybody in the entire world is gonna spar like that. That's okay. No matter how they're standing, you're going to have some weapons that are given to you and some that are taken away. So let's see how it might look. So Master Cosby chooses a sparring posture. Boom, this is our basic one. Now the reality is that no matter what posture they take, there's going to be some opening. People's arms cannot cover their entire body at one time, no matter how they're standing. So if I'm looking at Master Cosby, I can choose any technique I want, and I'm gonna look. Ah, there is an opening here. There's nothing blocking this. I could choose back leg roundhouse kick to hit that target. There's nothing here. I could lead hand jab punch or rear hand cross punch. I could front kick, right? I have a lot of options for there. Since her lead hand is low, there is an opening on this side of her head. Not so much on this side of her head. If I tried to chop, her hand is basically there already. Blocking is gonna be easy for her. So if I was a high kicker, maybe I can lead leg, round kick to her head. I'm really not a great high kicker. So like for me, maybe it doesn't actually get there. But I could punch here. I could reach hand if I knew that in the beginner class. Right? There's lots of things that I could do. So uh, let's say she chooses a different sparring posture. Maybe she has, oh yeah, both hands up. So with two hands around her head, suddenly getting to her head just got a lot more difficult. But how about things down here? I have a lot of options lower. So when you're working with your people at home, they should just hold a sparring posture, any posture they want. And you're gonna move around, look for the openings and see what techniques that you've been taught that you can use on those. So when we go to the still picture in a minute, I would encourage you pause the video, take a few minutes and try this out with your partners. Again, my partner right now is not kicking back or even moving much. So it's not my job, wham, to nail him. I'm just saying, okay, a punch works, a round kick works, a turn back kick could work, right? So that's what I want to see right now. Have some fun with it, guys. I'll see you back for round two. Awesome, guys. Round two. This is, we're gonna make it a little bit more realistic. So my partner takes a sparring stance this time, whichever one she wants. Now, 
Level two is called creating an opening. So I see openings right now, but I know that when I go to attack that opening, odds are my partner is not gonna wanna get hit, so they're going to move, okay? So for example, if I go for the jab punch, I know she's gonna shut the door on me, boom. But because I know she's gonna shut the door, guess what? Freeze. There are other openings. And since I know that she's gonna block this way, I know where the openings are gonna be. So I'm creating openings. So get back into that, uh, like you shut the door, and now rotate a little bit. Notice how when she shuts the door, she's actually open right here. So when she's open there, lead leg roundhouse kick works. So here's how creating an opening goes. I go for my jab punch, which I know she's going to block. Boom. I created the opening for that one. And I just that was just two techniques. I'm not totally random. I had an idea of what I might do, but you can really choose almost anything you want. So she's in a different sparring posture, let's say. Ah, both hands are up. What could I choose? Everybody knows front kick, so I'm gonna go for my front kick. Back leg, and she's gonna block. Ah, she blocked by putting her hand down. So when she put her hand down, what opening did she create? Side of her head, maybe this part of her chest. So hands are back up. I go for my front kick, she blocks, I punch. Really simple. I'm just taking one thing, Okay, I noticed that she blocked, so an opening is created here. So next time, I'm just gonna take advantage of that opening. Again, that's a super simple look at it, but conceptually, that's largely that's what sparring. sparring is. Very few people are just simply fast enough, bam, to always hit the spot before they react. They know how the person's gonna move, and so they plan accordingly, okay? So again, pause it on the next still shot. Take several minutes and play with this with your partners. Partners that are defending, move kind of half speed so that when your partner attacks, ah, she makes a reasonable block, I go for this, okay? For now, let's only block the first one. We know that they're gonna to continue to react, but for now, let's give our partners a chance to create that opening and try to take advantage of it. Have some fun. Good job. Now, I do want to go on record as saying uh, the concept is simple from what we're doing today, but I know that it is very advanced to really uh, uh, get these skills to a high level or to master them, especially this third one, okay? This is reading, again, on a concept-based level. So if Master Crowds like my partner again, we're in a sparring posture. Now, the first two things were really I was being offensive. First one was, I was just identifying an opening and just, boom, just going for it. The second one, I'm being aggressive, I'm being offensive again, right? Where I go for an opening, she goes to block it, and then I try to go for where the opening that was created is. This one, she's being offensive. So if I'm working with Master Cosby, uh, maybe she chooses to use the lead hand back fist. Looks like this, right? Boom, very scary. Now, when she does the lead hand back fist, go ahead and then freeze. Where is there an opening created? Boom, right here. It's gonna be created there every time. So my question is, how can I take advantage of that? What can I hit with? That could work. That could work. That could work. There are lots of options. You can choose anything as simple or as fancy as you want. Now I'll tell you, fancy looks cool, but simple works, right? So I'm a fan of simple techniques, typically. So here's how I might go down. She throws a back fist. It's not, oh, I see a back fist is coming and I'm just so fast that ah, I move. Oh, and now I see that there's a hole here. So I go for the kick. It's, I've seen this back fist before. So as soon as she starts to move in this back fist motion, I'm going to counter right away. Boom, boom. Or, boom, boom. Or, whatever, right? It's up to you. So that was just a choice off of a, a back fist. Maybe she throws a front kick, right? Lead leg front kick, here it comes. So when she throws this, where is there an opening being created? I'll be honest with you. This is gonna be tough for the beginner class, but I'll show you just as an illustration. So she goes for this, where is she open? Not anywhere real close. My best shot is here. 
So if I'm sparring, I try to block the front kick and I come for like turn hook kick, right? You guys don't know that one yet, but you will soon. So if you run into a roadblock, you may not have all the tools to achieve, uh, but you could still get there maybe less efficiently with something like this. Boom. I had to end up using some of my basic footwork, right? Block, step, drag, punch. Not as likely to work real time, but conceptually that's still a really smart move. So again, have your partner choose some different movements of you. When they go to, to strike, look where the openings are and take advantage of it, all right? So pause it on the next one, take a few minutes, work it out with your partners, and I'll see you right back here in a moment. All right, guys. So I wanna finish up our class with a little bit of a game and a lot of a challenge for many of you. You are going to need three items, right? Could be balled up socks, could be a little balls like this. Nothing that will break or hurt you because we're gonna work on juggling, okay? Now, uh, I am not a juggling expert by any means, but I have a little understanding of how it works to juggle three. So most people will tell you to have two balls first. When you do this, you're gonna throw one ball and then right before you catch it with your other hand, you're gonna throw the other one, one, two. Now, people that are really good jugglers, their hands don't move a lot. You can tell I'm not a great juggler. One, two, one, two, one, two. Don't throw them both at the same time, which uh, I believe is kind of the skill, one of the skills to juggle, four. But we'll start with three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. If you feel good about that, the hand that throws first is gonna have two balls. I'm gonna throw one, and then just before I catch the other one, I'm gonna throw the other ball. And then just before I catch, I'm gonna throw and throw and throw. We'll see if I have the skills to pull this off. One, ooh, ooh. That was pretty good. Again, clearly I am not an expert, but Juggling is an interesting challenge. The parallel to sparring is you have to stay really in the moment with this, right? Especially for me, it requires like my complete and undivided focus to have any shot at this. So it's good training for me, right? So have a little fun with some juggling, guys. Um, again, I want to encourage you to spend a little bit of time on your stripe material, white belts especially, knock that out. I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. We are aiming to have a Zoom testing, I think in about two weeks. Okay, so I'd love to see a ton of white belts getting promoted to their sunshine belt, and I'd like to see other people move up a rank as well. So thanks for continuing to send in your training logs. If you have questions or you need to do some more stripe testing, most of you guys already know, you can submit the videos uh, by text, or you can reach out to me uh, and we can do uh, set up like a FaceTime or a Zoom meeting just for you and we can take care of those strike tests. Thank you guys and we'll see you again soon. Hi guys, Master C here again. I was editing the video for the class today and I realized I never told the ending to Ben Shiflet's cow joke. I can't believe I almost lost that. So the joke was, what do cows like to read in the morning? The newspaper, of course. Cool. <laughs> Enjoy your class guys, I'll talk to you soon.